afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, welcome to another exciting propaganda cast with me, your host, Imperial Dane, Master of Propaganda. We don't have an exciting one versus one on the road to Kharkov, here between in the north, crazy man fighting for Germany, for the Wehrmacht, for the second Panzer Division going up against here. Desmond fighting in the south here for the Commonwealth, rolling out for the 7th Armoured Division. And we got infantry bullets, infantry machine gun, and anti tank gun bullets in stock. Since our close air support, mobile defense, mechanized assault versus Royal Artillery, Royal Regiment, well, not Royal Regiment, Royal Engineer Regiment, there we go, and Commando Regiment, not quite as royal though. And we got kind of this there following up on the MD42 here for Crazy Man. That's allowing you to control them out a bit more. Grabbing territory there. And we got a very quick Bren carry out here for. Not Bren carry, Universal carry there for Desmond. Of course, it was from the first game referred to as the Bren carry, though technically the real name is Universal Carrier. There also existed the Lloyd Carrier, which was basically a really big Universal Carrier. We're going there for the cutoff. MD42, Grenadiers. Infantry section setting out there. For the king, standing about there with a Lee Enfield rifles. Universal carrier ready for use. There we go. Carrier ready to move Universal off. carrier out. Central victory point is got there by the hands. Sam is being laid down there. Good positioning by Desman. Good positioning. And going to do this to following up further for Crazy Man, who's immediately going here for mobile defense. By the way, mobile defense option has been chosen here for the Wehrmacht, ready opening up for. Counter-attack tactics, panzer petition, those swim reserves, the Kuma, and of course the command tank, defeats Panzer. Vickers falling up afterwards to Desmond, there we go, Pani's playing fire, the Bren carry his Bren gun opening up there. Releasing a string of bullets, but coming under fire and return here from an MP42, nice position in the nearby house. Forcing the Universal Carrier to have to pull back when the intersection engaged the Pioneers. MP42 joins up here as well, forcing the intersection further into cover and further away. Allowing the pioneers themselves to pull away reasonably safely, except they don't do so. Not entirely sure what the crazy man told me to do, but it's not really working. It's nice just getting his pioneers absolutely slaughtered. And there we go, the Vickers has arrived. We got a third one of this called the enemy mod on the way for Crazy Man. Universal carry there pursuing the pioneers for just a bit. Been grabbing points over here. We've still got the infantry raid, sort of will make a mess of any plans here that uh, Crazy Man might have. Nice heading out here behind some sandbags. Done and all secure. So three kind of these, one MP4, two versus two infant sections, a Vickers and a Universal Carrier. And we've got here the platoon command post already going up for Desmond very quickly, very swiftly. Also quickly opening up for sappers, anti-tank guns, snipers, and whatever else he might desire. Your forces have constructed a platoon command post. So we'll get the Vickers K here, or will he go for the Wasp? And he's moving out there. No tag up here for Crazy Man. Cut off already the secured. Not really much of a defense there. The MD42, while able to sort of control the area here, can't really hold the cut off there. And ultimately, that's so you do see the Crazy Man might just have extended a bit too much in the early game. And he's put you all here getting punished by, by Desman. He's in a bit of trouble. Quickly falling back here for the cut off point. MD42 not falling up secure. Pioneers bringing the gold guys in for his cut off point there. So the Crazy Man sort of trying to strike back at Desman. Perhaps force a reaction, forcing him to pull back from here towards the cut off point, maybe. We'll see if that actually works out though for Crazy Man or if Desmond simply refuses to take the bait. So far though, it seems to some extent he is. Could by the way have used his carriage to pull back an infantry section. Looks like he's leaving them there just to hold the position there. Upgrading it to a wharf and so then striking versus the Hun here. While the Vickers are doing what they can to suppress the Grenadiers, keep them pinned down. The wharf is sort of moving the hat tackler from another angle, burning the Huns to a nice, fine crisp. There we go, Sappers on the way. Bunker up here, and we do have taken there for Crazy Member so far. No sort of use of it. Peter falling dead alongside Heinrich. As the Vickers there flanks in, Vickers falls away, and Wasp upgrade done. There we go. Two huge tanks with fuel mounted, and the Germans in a bit of trouble, of course, and our flamethrowers have damage over time there. Things a lot less fun there for an infantry than caught in a sort of flamethrower burst. Go MD42 next inside the building and Inferno envelops. And some poor bastard complaining why I didn't join the Navy right before he lit into fire. There we go, veterans one away here for the war, which really done a lot of damage to the Germans. 
within its first few moments of existence as it was. Still maintaining control of the cutoff point. Crazy man sort of trying to get around here, which so far has been rather frustrated by the wolf. He's got nothing to sort of immediately counter it. No incendiary rounds on an MD-42, no scout car, no nothing really here to deal with this little incendiary monster. So of course there might be a response even the likes of Megan Company from Crazy Man, he certainly will have to get something in that sense to sort of try and deal with it. So right now Desmond's got the territorial advantage, soon he'll have the fuel advantage. In style, versus Crazy Man and the Wehrmacht. And we got an anti tank hit just in case Crazy Man's getting something here to try and deal with it. NK or the Universal K. I mean, he's obviously expecting a 2 2 2. Otherwise, I don't think he'd bother with the Vickers. We also got Sabs here, Lingdon Mines. Good work there. Further preparation for his scout car. Trying to hunt down his Universal K. Oh, good rough there. Kills quite a few. I'm not entirely sure why he burst into flame. I suppose he was smuggling industrial grade whiskey in his pockets. Unfortunately, we're up there trying to deal with things here. We're going to get flanked in a few moments. Vickers and Sappers ready to deal with their hands there. Held up against behind a well. 2-2 two two on the way, so there we go. Grabbing the fuel there, at least attempting to grab the fuel again. Nothing further here from Desmond at the moment. No sign of doctrine from him. Certainly not from Crazy Man either, not actually utilising it. Will it be the both force or the EAC here that Desmond will be aiming for? Both an option. I mean, considering the amount of territory that Desmond has at the moment, a both of us could certainly further, you know, fortify it, hold it, and make it much difficult for Crazy Man to sort of, you know, push forwards and retake some of the territories lost here. So, of course, have to see what ultimately the Desmond does settle on here as a choice, and certainly also a doctoral choice. It could work towards that, say, with Royal Engineer or maybe Royal Artillery. There we go, got the 2 2 2 ready. Sap is there halted in their tracks. A few stout grenadiers. Vickers holding up there as well. Enemy causing trouble. Trying to take one of our points. And a mortar on the way can add an effort to help push forward here for Crazy Man a bit. Until there's all those uh, Vickers and whatnot. And there we go. Fire against the MD42. Quickly doing a lot of damage. So the damage over time certainly is all unpleasant. Go good hit on the 222. Forcing it back. So all here. Desmond is still controlling the centre. Relying on the universal care of the Vickers and the anti-tank gun to basically sort of punish any infantry that gets too close there. Of course the flanks are a bit more open, but so far Crazy Man isn't able to really land any serious punch there, I think. Our capture point. They're trying to take it. And it is here basically lacking the number, so the firepower will be really overcome the British are attacking much larger number, even with the lower rate of fire while out in the open. There's simply not enough kind of is, and they don't have any sort of advantage either in terms of cover. There we go, Vetchy too though for the Universal carry already. It's only getting a bit more uncomfortable here for Casey Man's gonna be as the area gets lit up. Two to two is going to repair. Got more mines here. Good job there by Desmond. Good job. Good work, men. Right, we'll there we go. Quick attempt there, Trying to sort of push and surprise it with a panzer. Not quite working out. Two to point. two. Oh, slowly getting your pair there. Good. No tag up though. Of course, you could try and you know aim for a pull by this stage. I think that would be a bit risky. That universal carrier is just turning up to work its way and go. There we go. One unit incinerated on the spot. Almost fetching the field ready on that universal carrier. It's really proving to be quite the monstrous little contraption there for Desmond's forces. Just lighting up Germans left and right. And it's almost section three already. Which is only going to make it a bit more maneuverable and that's more likely to survive an engagement by getting out of it quickly. There you go, gonna be in trouble. And there we go, Veteran T3, Veteran T3. 21 kills already. Our supply line's broken. A this is being bugger. Overrun. Still, Crazy Man is making some kind of progress. The problem is, though, he's too spread out at the moment. He's not really covering his troops against the Universal Carrier very well, or focusing on just trying to get the fuel, maybe some munitions, in sort of an orderly fashion. 
And that's rather making things very easy for the Universal Carry here at the moment. Which is not exactly what he ought to be doing. So what will be happening next? Have you already got tech up there from Desmond? Moving on for the company command post, could quickly go for a centaur or he could try and aim for the Cromwell. Power is now available for units. Ready we got tech up there at the same time for Crazy Man as well, he could go for the Sparmer core. Sharp thinking there, he might want to f get a fuel cache to support things a bit there, considering the sort of fuel situation he had. Minesweepers up there, no mines from Crazy Man, at least not for the time being. Making some good progress though versus Desmart though. Any moment our course can be disrupted as we see here. Sap has forced back, nicely done there. And there you go, into the push here. Bren cares in hand though, quickly stopped by the MD42. No chance of pushing through there in the slightest. Nothing further there. There you go. A few shots there, none penetrate though. And trying to catch the Germans there, polighting the surrounding area on fire. Stop for the Vickers. A few attempts to sort of breaking through. He could try to throw some Ostrom at the end, but then again, you know, so Palmer Corps might work. Or I suppose he could still be aiming for the Puma. You know, certainly a few choices here for Crazy Man. Whereas it seems Desman is actually flowing quite a bit there. I do think he should consider maybe floating less, commander, unless he's planning here some commando gliders to be sort of inserted. And there we go, he might find be able to get there we go, Panzer Faust and the 2 2 Ben Gintz, roll the men lost. There we go. One of our universal carriers has been destroyed. See. So there we go, that should give Crazeman a bit more breathing room. Smoke popped. Commando glider flying about there, but could he be aiming to land it? Go eastern side, going for the more vulnerable points here, crashing down, wings flying off, and there we go. Commando team hits the ground. Immediately forcing the 2 2 2 their back. Due to its very low health, though, otherwise the commandos, I don't think, would have much of a chance there, to be honest. And before sitting up there, just going to get flanked by the commandos, who could even pop the light gammon bomb to force them But there you go, even without that thrown, they are quick to retreat here. They'd go further salt here. We've quickly seen a crazy man's front line is being unraveled. Mortar doing what it can, they sort of slow down the British assault advance, but it's rather isolated. So overall his force are rather spread up. The old gun had a tank that he could try and grab. And there we go, Puma called up. Puma called up. Bridge group continue. There we go. Sap has wiped out for the mortar. Small victory there for Germany. There we go. Rough grenade, that's a bit too late, they need to retreat. Mortar as well. And there you go, Puma on the move there, 50mm gun and of course the Cratchit machine gun. Cromwell on white plus another sap section there for Desmond. I fear that mortar will be lost here. Perhaps not though, with the commando team there rushed off. There might be a slight chance of survival there. Now actually we need to deal with the anti-tank and ensuring that uh, Desmond can recover it. Not bad, not bad. No support McCall though, Cromwell almost ready, and he's only got really a Puma to deal with the Cromwell. That's not going to be the best situation there, in particular since the Cromwell is faster than most other medium tanks, and that's my actually a good chance of hunting down the Puma and finishing it off. There's a bit of a risk here for Crazyman at the moment, though, of course, he might not be quite aware of it. Commanders there, there were many types of commanders, I believe. We had Royal Marine Commanders, we had Commanders being sort of inserted by air, Commanders. Gotten from specific regions and so on there, so a bit of fun there. In this case, these seem to be Irish commanders. I don't know if they actually recruited commanders there from Ireland specifically. Who knows? Either way, quite potent troops there with their silenced Sten guns. Got the light gammon bomb, demo charges, ambush, light smoke grenades, which aren't quite as effective, but can still provide light cover. Plus, the Guinea Adventure 3 poppy on retreat. And there you go, though. Cromwell strikes. Hunting down those damnable hands. Puma here trying to deal with it, but doesn't quite work out like that. Pack 40 rhyming there, good hit from the Cromwell, good hit. Oh dear. Can't quite keep up good speed there, so retreating and that allows the Cromwell to easily close the distance. There we go, main gun destroyed. Puma is in deep shice and kaput. So ultimately, the, the Puma didn't amount to much here. 
that's going to give Desmond quite an upper hand now versus Crazy Man, who that's also delayed any sort of medium armor he can get thanks to the Puma. Mindset quickly going to be cancelled. Tutus is only what he's got to sort of really stall up Desmond now as he beats the assault here for the seventh armor. Tutu two falling back. Victory point being lost. There's an advantage there for Crazy Man at the moment. That's also the only real advantage I think he has at the moment. Sector's moving up there. We also got options here for assault and smoke raid operations. And Swin, in fact, you could also lay down mortar cover here against Crazy Man's positions. There we go. Pioneers oh, executed here by the commandos. No survivors. All dead on the road. Quick mining there. Good work by Desman. Good work. Pack 40 moving up. Training more pioneers. Cromwell moving. Might take some hits there, but it's not helping him get Panther Faust it. Go, almost got it, almost got it. We got the two shooting. There we go. We got more to cover available as well here. Cromwell needs to get away before it's knocked out. Otherwise, Desmond here could lose any chance of further building up momentum versus Crazeman. And that could give Crazeman sort of time tack to get out some arm of his own and push back and or recapture the field. Even then, though, the Cromwell is going to take some time for it. There you go, Commander shouting straight into the low thing. And there we go, we got a smoke grenade down. The thing to keep in mind is it doesn't actually hide you from it. It's a light smoke grenade, so basically provides light cover where you pop it, which of course makes it different from the other smoke grenades. So, little vital difference there, little vital difference. We're losing a capture point. Vickers versus MD 42. Second Panzer de Jean slides forward, still waiting for the actual Panzer to arrive. Cromwell making it way back. The enemy cut our supply line. And what should we get next? Firefly, sent out, try and maybe get a specialization in the name either for the Crom not the Cromwell, but the Churchill. Or the Comet. Enemy causing trouble, trying to take one of our points. There we go, going for the cut-off point once more. Crazy Man certainly has some good ideas there. That's only going to slow down the resource income for Desmond, giving Crazy Man more time to, to get out some stuff of his own. Supply is looking a bit squiffy. Line's been cut. The Crazy Man has managed to sort of regain territory and actually push the situation against Desmond. But now we got assault in, sprinting, and of course attack bonuses. Plus we got the Elby concentrating across the field here. Quickly giving Desmond here the lay of the land. As it currently is, there's a lot of trouble there with all these infantry and firing rate. Of course, one thing to note it only affects infantry sections, this assault ability. Other infantry is not affected. Little important detail there. Oh, my mid off, they can lose trouble. Command to continue, but they are taking heavy fire from the Grenadiers. And they like to machine give any infantry coming up there, coming up from the MP42. Could they avoid it? Going straight to the cutoff point, which is reasonably unguarded, so well done there by Desmond. Making good use of his assault usage here. Commandos does not push forward, so to push back the Germans even further. Maybe support the infantry is now getting caught out in the open by the Grenadiers. Good hit there from the Grenadian effort. And Cromwell on the hunt again. Got white smoke. Not white smoke. Fire smoke here, so you clog up some defenders, make things more difficult there for Crazy Man. So Palmer Court is up. Could he be going for the Stuke or the Panzer IV? Stuke will certainly allow him to more quickly deal with the Cromwell. And of course, the Panzer IV would also have to deal a bit more with the infantry specifically. Comes down to that, and he's actually got a second glide in already. When will that be landing? Here? Here? Or here again? Oh the way, Desmond is certainly turning up the volume here. Wings knocked off. There we go. That's a second commando team arriving here to support Desmond. And his fight against the Germans. Almost ready to there, pushing back the Germans. No Panzer can lose anything else with a bit of a firepower there from Crazy Man at the moment. Commanders continue to advance. 
taking losses. More grenadiers arriving. And infantry moving forward. No grenades here though. No grenades. So the MG42 is safe there. Looks like he's aiming for the Panzer for Mr. Crazy Man. Shooting it's actually timing for the mid-game analysis, currently chasing sort of a bit of swing back and forth, but uh, looks like Desmond has sort of managed to regain total advantage. Whoa, my apologies there. He certainly got a bit of an assault advantage there now with two commando teams. He's also got infantry here equipped with Bren guns, that's also giving a lot of firepower in that way. He could, but considering at this point, maybe, you know, gets the increased size... Those squad sizes here would help both his intersections and his sappers make it more durable. I'm sort of keep pushing a bit harder. I think that would work out quite nicely here for Desmond, so that would very much be an option here. Otherwise, he could consider Centaur. I mean, there's not so much other options to deal with, so that would be good. Or he could, of course, aim for the Firefly, prepare for enemy armor. I mean, that's also an option, but I don't know. Apart from me thinking if he just gone for Centaur as quickly as he could, you know, he could have pushed harder against Crazy Man, maybe he finished off the fight at that point. We'll, of course, have to see another option. He's also just, you know, Specializing and considering then either getting the combat tank or the Churchill depends on what you do. Considering how much territory and so how much more in the defense he is at the moment, a part of me would say you know he should consider Anvil. That would give him the airburst shields, heavy engineers, Churchill tanks, advanced warning. I mean it will make it easy for him to defend. But of course, if he wants to be more aggressive, you know he could go for this, get some gammon bombs, the comet, and so on. Other way, some thoughts that'd be good, and also maybe you know either way getting a buffer's option sort of help defend. I mean, that would really help out Desmond, I think, at certain points. I'm going to slow down Crazy Man's advance at certain points. Otherwise, Cashes would still be a good choice, I think, for Desmond. Beyond that, not so much. I mean, he can basically keep up what he's been doing so far. For Crazy Man, of course, that's where the challenge is, really. I mean, getting a Panzerfall is not going to be a bad idea, but you definitely can quickly follow up with a Stug. And I think you should also consider getting some Panzer grenades. I mean, more firepower that way would serve him well. Maybe another MD-42, so I'm going to try and control them out a bit further. Or another mortar. I just think he needs something sort of add somewhere an edge of firepower there versus the infantry, in particular with all the commanders arriving. I mean, a lot more bullets would do a lot more good. In particular, since he's lacking fuel, that would help him out quite a bit. Another option would be to get some fuel caches up instead. Maybe sort of help control the command cutoff point there would do Crazy Man quite a bit of good. Otherwise, he needs to focus a bit more around here. He's slightly too tended to sort of split up a bit too quickly and get his units isolated and then easily dealt with. So I think there's too many unnecessary risks sort of taken with that. And also, at one point, consider throwing in some Ostrom reserves and then sort of push down the west flank with the more expendable Ostrom, forcing you know, Desmond to sort of then pull more valuable units over to deal with them, while then sort of the more proper troops then get pushed up, say, the right flank, and sort of push away Desmond from there. So there's definitely some choices there for Crazy Man, but of course not all are going to be quite valuable and valid. So let's return to the fight here and see what actually happens. Commando is doing absolutely nothing. Section then cover, no part was laid up there. So sort of deny it to them, and there we go, they're gonna do this whole thing. Falls back, that should be there. Good work, good work. Sergeant Peters enjoying the view here, and the commanders fill up right behind them. Ready to strike a blow against Jerry. Enemy threatening a capture point. What we shooting at this time? And there we go, commanders wasn't where the grenadiers, striking at them with Sten guns. Scheiße Dieter, the silence means he's serious. There we go, because the intervention around sort of help there a bit, just a bit, but there you go, Pantavor on the way, so finally getting some armor out. That should be a bit more chance to work there with the Cromwell. Which immediately trying to deal with the Grenadiers. A few good shots there. No armor from Deathman, no nothing. Oh, there you go, he's going for the Firefly. He's clearly worried about some kind of armor being brought up there from Crazy Man. So he wants to bring up something that's only going to help deal with it quite more violently. Maybe going for six and pushing up, it's not going to be good to retreat there. Is creeping about, infiltrations there, commando striking in. And there we go, mortar shooting in a few shots as well. But again, eastern point here rather unguarded. 
allowing the fuel pull there to be quickly lost alongside the cutoff point. So not so good there for Crazyman again. But now the Panther Force should give him a chance there. In particular, I think the machine gun should do quite a bit of extra good. There you go, situation dire. Until the Panther Force arrives to save the day. Yeah. Shoot him down or run him down, Heinz. Either way, I want those Tommies dead. There we go. Comet shooting in, and we got another bit of more to cover this time around here. Catching the support elements, putting the pack 40 on the head there with white phosphorus. Nasty stuff there being delivered by Desman. Panther Wolf falling back towards it. And looks like you know, they got one of those pioneers. Commanders, though, moving into the white phosphorus. Oh dear. Taking heavy losses due to it, working out nicely for the Germans, I suppose, but they lost the Pack 40 as well there. The can be recovered. Remaining in the White Phosphorus was just enough to sort of be shot at, but without being able to shoot back just the White Phosphorus disabling the vehicle crew in that sense. That's been unfortunate there for Crazy Man ultimately is forced to pull back the Panzer 4 here. At the same time we got the Firefly already ready to fight, and we've got the Tulip Rockets going up as well. That's definitely bad news there for the Panther 4 Commander. Since he's now going to go be hunted down by that. Plus the Cromwell's heat vengeance too. Meaning it shoots faster. Which is generally a bad thing as well for the enemy. There you go again after the Panther 4. Can't decide what it wants to do. Panther Force there might be able to get with the Pack 40. There we go. Panther 4 moving in trying to get the kill there. Trying to knock it out. Almost got it, almost got it, Pioneer's falling, leave the cover there, Panther 4 can't afford to lose it, one good hit there, could result in destruction, but, got the Cromwell, got the Cromwell, small victory there for Germany, and before it's here, but Vickers here holding up the Germans, gonna be his wiped out, not gonna be his wiped out, but pinned down, mistake there, good use so far, more to cover there, by Desmond, nice to see it actually used, Quickly following up with a replacement Cromwell infrastructure still holding up there, enjoying the insides. Less Germans there. Rick, we're back off the and perhaps a chance for a spot of tea and some biscuits. Over. There we go, Enemy pushing forwards. Inchnuff is not bolstering his squad sizes. A lot of British players at the moment do, so would I think you know, Desmond would go there, but it uh, looks like he has decided that it's irrelevant. And this glide is really causing a mess here. Bit of an improvised airfield. The air commander charging straight in. And quickly thinking they're going to lose up close. Cromwell gun tank ready for action. Whoa! Apparently, when a glider gets wrecked, it turns into a gravitational anomaly. Wow. It sucked in everything in a nearby radius. It just looks insane. But there you go, commandos flanking it, wiping out a lot of units here, doing damage, forcing Craig Man to pull back their quarterback with his Panther 4. There you go, Panther moving in, trying to sort of ensure it's not total carnage here for Craig Man. There you go, Pack 40. Dead, wiped out by the commandos, ever mean spirited. It looks like they will be able to get away with it too. A rather daring commando raid paid off there for Desmond. Go, Cromwell, Firefly, flying in there. It's enough he's having the Firefly lead here instead of the Cromwell. A bit risky. I mean, if he hits a mine and then gets caught up in front of Pack 4, that's not going to be good news there for Desmond. In this case, though, he was lucky. Pack 40 again, you'll hit this on the far flag, which was leading the way. Cromwell following up here. Panther 4 in trouble. Bit of slow there, Church, and there you go. He pops smoke. A very devious maneuver there by Craigsman. Man to save his Panther 4 there from the far flag and crew the Cromwell. Afraid, quite dead. An artillery barrage has been laid on. Quite nicely there. Quite nicely done there. Enemy threatening a capture point. Sapper's rushed away. Because they could be used here by Craigsman. Apparently, with Sage, you grab it and you grab as, as many weapons as you can from Desman and turn them against him. Would allow him to control more of the map and make it more difficult for particularly the commandos to move about unimpeded, which I think would be one of Crazy Man's main priorities here, as those guys are definitely giving him quite the headache. Now 
no further armor there. He's got a bit of manpower. Could try and fling in the Ostrom here. There's an anti tank gun and the Vickers right here. I mean, grabbing both of those would greatly strengthen Crazy Man's current situation. That would be another anti tank gun and a Vickers machine gun. I'd say that'd be good. In particular, now that Desmond's actually getting a Centaur AA tank. And there we go, smoke up. Just again, remember it only provides light cover, it's not like every other smoke grenade. Though I suspect it might actually end up being just changed into a regular smoke grenade because it's just too confusing. And all of a sudden, for whatever reason, you have one particular smoke grenade which just doesn't work like every other smoke grenade in the game. It doesn't even quite make sense, it only provides light cover. What is it? Cigarette smoke they sort of puffed into it. But there you go, commandos get the gun of ears. MD42 has going to fall back. And then moving straight into the white phosphorus again. I mean, Desmond really seems to have an act for that. Got an infiltration of the white down elsewhere. Small victory for Germany again. Another close to annihilation. Mortar cover comes in the party. It makes it difficult here for the enemy in the sector. Good job. It's a neat little artillery ability here, actually. They do need line of sight. Basically, as long as you've got someone looking for you, though, you can basically get a much more effective artillery barrage since they aim for you instead of just randomly firing. Supply lines been cut. There you go, Centaur arrived. Cromwell dealing with a gun of up north. The Centaur, by the way, was not the name of the AA tank, it was the name of the chassis itself. It was basically the predecessor of the Cromwell, but the Centaur never really saw action. A few bands, I believe, saw some action, including one with a howitzer mounted on it, sort of lighter one. That was about it, really. I don't actually think the Centaur AA tank even saw action. And noting, by the way, I do believe the chariot itself was actually taken from a cruise, either cruise tank, that is the Crusader, it's a tank variant as well. So, little fun fact there, little fun fact. Sabotaging on the counter hold up, Jerry here, but it's not looking good there, it's not looking good. Meanwhile, the armor's attacking, and there you go. Centaur leading the way there with double 20mm pulse and guns, tearing apart the MD crew in a matter of moments. More to cool next in trouble, and there we go. It's really doing a lot of damage, as you might be noticing. Veteran 3 Mortar Crew did not stand a chance. I mean, he left his support weapons rather unattended. And the Centaur was able to take quite good advantage of that. So, very nicely done there. And now we do have a Stugart, a Stormgeschutz, which should provide a bit more serious anti tank firepower there for Crazy Man if he can sort of get some good hits versus Desman. Vickers retaken. Six pounder gun, no. Nord. Again, smoke here. And there you go, Firefly gets a good hit. There's the Panzer 4, forcing it tracked. Stuck nearby to have to pack 40s here. There we go, coming to his Martin Strange to the center here, not looking good. Beginning in some good kills there, very good. And we're striking at the commandos. And gonna be just getting shredded as actually trying to run there. Go might be go for Panthers Bars, but at a catastrophically high loss. No, white there. Looks like in this case Crazy Man and to catastrophically underestimate the centaur. Once it hits into one, it's only going to get worse since that ability is a nightmare if properly utilized. A nightmare on the receiving end and not for the one using it, I should note. I still managed to do some damage here. Duke did not really pursue saying some damage alongside the Panzer IV, both needing some dire repairs urgently. Ready for action. But with both commander sections here, Vection C3, it's going to be a bit of problematic there for Crazy Man as well. Engine ticket over. Light machine gun dropped, hay machine gun dropped. So many weapons dropped, we got mortars as well. And we actually got artillery called in here by Desman. Holding up some pyrotechnic supplies and then dropping off a flare for the base HQ there to shoot up with. He could, you know, combine it with, say, a uh, handle tactics or, you know, uh, fire some airburst shells as well. But it uh, looks like he just wanted regular stuff. Cut, 
Good hits in the chrome milk, gaining back to engine one. Our capture point. They're trying to take it. And another mortar cover here to deal with anyone trying to take the victory point. Well done. Combining the two here. They of course could come on further with Anvil for Free Slam on the victory point. So lots of uh, Again no, as soon as they blow up you just like someone set up a gravity bomb and then the <laughs> why is it with those commandos and the white phosphorus they always seem to run straight in this case they actually got hit by the white phosphorus Stu Blades is tight we got a Pendleman machine going on there as well that's good should have here versus all the commandos and there we go quickly gunning sound and some of those Schweinhunde. Shoot, Heinz! Shoot! I don't care if you think they're Irish. I can't tell the difference anyways. Look, I don't care if you studied at Dublin. Just shoot them! And we got the same time, we got the same time, we got then getting the pack 40 and quickly wiping it out! Those no supported here by the Sappers with a lap machine gun. Time for me to react. Stoop needs to in there. He's Need to get another stoop, 100 points left, fact, less than 100 points, you need to get the Sturmgeschutz. Another one, more tank destruction, more machinen gewehren. See, this is looking a bit dim. And that centaur has certainly paid itself off. Buildings a bit shattered there. There goes Stuke moving up. Second Stuke on the way finally. Endlich. There we go. Target weak point. Target to weak point. Fritz. Ah, got the main gun though. Almost as good. Almost as good. But can he pursue? There we go. There we go. Striking out. Striking out. Put the tent out. Knocked out here. Almost 52 on both here. He should push, he should push. Have the Panther 4 lead the way, keep the two get a respectable distance in particular with the Firefly almost knocked out. We got another Firefly on the way there for Desmond. Enemy now's trouble. the time here for the second Panther to strike. Boys. Well, he still has a chance. Also, use counter attack tactics to grab territory as quickly as possible. Cromwell though flanking in, forcing it to sort of pull back instead of pursuing here and knocking out the heavily damaged armor. Nice execute there by Desmond, nice executed. Commanders following up, so saving his other tank to beast launching what could be either diversion act to critical blow to. Crazy man's flank, either way seems to going up. Commander clearing up one pack four there. Veggie two in the Panda four. Smoke pot on retreat. Shots fired, fences shattered. Commander's run over. They got Doyle. There you go, Panda all moving in there. We go more smoke popped. Rather unique veteran free ability they get. They pop smoke on retreat. Rather neat one, though. Rather neat one, too. Another Firefly almost done. His uh, first one still hasn't been repaired. Almost 52. Sadly, again, he didn't really manage to pursue with the Stoops and Panther Falls and, you know, do some serious damage there. The Territory not look good here for Crazy Man, but still, he might have a chance. Use counter attack tactics, push forward, grab as much territory, do as much damage. So far, Crazy Man seems a bit slower here to get anywhere going. Not machine gun dropped. And there you go, Vickers recruit again. If only Crazy Man maybe had grabbed it and used it for his own. Oh well. Oh dear. Oh dear. This could look a bit bad for Desmond. He's actually sitting in a Firefly on its own. A bit risky here with all the German armor waiting to well make a lock of any British armor. And we go one shot versus Stug. Crazy man a bit slow to react here, a bit of a traffic jam as well. And there we go, more to cover again. Nice use there. He really seems to be liking using it. And again, he can be sort of break up infantry assault, or that matter to deal with you know, infantry assault defense. Oh dear, oh dear. There we go, seems like he maybe has a sense of chance here to get that firefly still trolling in. Pantor got to go to the intersection, there we go. Side exposed, battery two, target weak point, heat run, there we go. Main gun destroyed, tank stunned. And Firefly kaput. The enemy have destroyed the victory points are not looking good. He's got one here, but he's not holding. He's got no machine guns covering things up. He's pulling on much though. Could try and hunt down his baby targets here with his armored fist. But he needs to keep pushing. 
Need to look for targets. Search and destroy. Are they getting some damage in there? Enemy causing trouble. Try to oh, no, take no, he's going back to the lap machine when he speaks around the big two points. He's got barely any points left, and there we go. The British are rushing the central point. The only point that Crazy Man has left. We got the Panther to help cover it, but he's got nothing. Machine guns, nothing to really help hold it until then. Oh dear. Panther Vault with a total help, they're doing what they can with the main gun and machine guns. Gonna do something with the can as well. Commanders are tying into with their Sten gun stooks, hunting about here. No big two points left under this control, one there close being secured. But here, Desman is making another critical mistake. He's sending in his Firefly alone, he knows there's stooks about, he knows he got target weak point. But there you go, Vetri 2 almost got the Panther 4 smoke popped. Moving in, Pioneer's repair, but he's too late. Got the victory point there. This is very close, very close. And there you go, lost to Stoog. He did send in the one with more health and a bit of armor. No, they wouldn't have done anything there. There's the Firefly's main gun, so at that point, he's pretty much, uh, well, pointless to only mention it, so yeah. But still, they had more health and a slightly higher rate of fire, and perhaps a chance of target weak point. Oh, well. More Austral... Oh, he's finally calling up some Austral, but at this point he's looking rather a bit too late. Firefly flanking against the Stoog. No flank coverage. Oh, he's about to lose it. Nine, not too Stoog. Beautiful Stoog. There we go. Firefly got it. Nice execute there by Desman. Whatever small opportunity of victory that seems to preserve the crazy man has been lost now. Like sand, very fine sand through his hands. And there we go, looks like Crazy Man gave up the fight, didn't surrender just quick, which does result in these sink errors. So there you go, game over, a loss for Germany, a victory for the United Kingdom. Bit of a brutal fight at times. I do you think Crazy Man could have been a bit more focused in the beginning, you know, or added in some more machine guns? There was some elements of the Dream Real Workout which gave Desmond, I think, a great upper hand here. The Universal Care with the Flame for it proved out to be very potent and certainly Desmond had fought that out part quite nicely. I think the Puma was a mistake there by Crazy Man and ended up being quite wasted, delaying his medium armor. If he'd gone for that sooner, he would have had a better chance, I think. And he also missed out on a good opportunity attack to grab some weapons here. The Vickers and the Field Gunner, or the Six Pounder Gun, would have done, I think, a great deal of good there for Crazy Man. Might have given a better chance of winning, but sadly, he didn't quite sort of catch on to that. Also, lack of caches, just throwing gun ideas instead of saying maybe some awesome, just for sort of more numbers, or Pantagon is for a bit more sort of focused firepower. So there were some problems there for Crazy Man's play, which rather gave, I think, Desmond sort of the upper hand to also make good use of abilities, you know, more to cover. We even saw a bit of assault there, we saw commandos, he could have used maybe some smoke read operations, but all quite nicely done there. So, there you go, I hope you enjoyed this match, I hope you learned something from it, I hope it gave you some ideas for matches of what to do and what not to do if it, you know, feel free to share, subscribe. I mean, the more that subscribe, the better. And if not, you know, send a new plan or write some feedback in the comment section. This is Imperial Dancing. Cheers. Thank you for watching and see you all tomorrow. Bye.